Welcome, everybody, <laughs> to our talk. Um, so uh, I'm Suresh. Uh, I work for the FikaWorks uh, Collective, and uh, I did a project at uh, Rabobank. And today I'm here uh, together with my colleague, Carly Huibrechts. Uh, and we will uh, talk a little bit uh, about the journey that we had at Rabobank, uh, introducing uh, Argo events and Argo workflows, uh, and running this for two years in our production environment. So, Carly. Yeah, let's start. Um, before I kick off, let me introduce myself. I'm Carly. Um, I worked at Rabobank for the last nine years and started off as a financial advisor and now I'm a product owner. Um, and in these nine years, I've worked in the um, area of special asset management. More on special asset management later, let me first introduce to you the Rabobank. We are the second largest Dutch bank and we were founded by uh, farmers decades ago, a corporation of farmers. And um, we uh, still have a cooperative mindset and uh, a corporate, we are still a cooperation. We have over 2 million members and those members have uh, direct influence on the decision the bank makes. Um, the cooperative roots are also reflected in our mission, uh, growing a better world together. And uh, we have over 9 million customers and almost 2 million mortgages with a total of 193 uh, million euros. So in our mission, growing a better world together, we have three uh, transition topics. First food, uh, climate energy uh, transition, and the last one on which I want to put the focus is the uh, transition to be more um, inclusive society. Um, we believe that everyone deserves a fair and equal chance to uh, pursue their ambitions, and we do that by um, uh, 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 taking away barriers to financial products, but also by helping our customers who, uh, with a mortgage who are not able to pay their mortgage anymore. Um, it can happen to all of us, whether it's unemployment or whether it's when you get a divorce or whether you have any financial difficulties in your life. Um, uh, you, you, uh, there's a point and you can stop uh, paying your mortgage. And, the department where I worked the last nine years, special asset management, is uh, there to help these customers. And to support our um, advisors who work at special asset management, we have three processes in place. One is our mortgage administration, who registers uh, the um, uh, payments who come in every night, um, and if they're missed, and it sends out a nightly data file. Then we have Argo Workflows, who process this data file, and um, transfer or update the database in our case management system. The case management system uh, supports the employees and these employees get uh, tasks created on their dashboard so they know which clients they should start supporting with their financial difficulties. Um, so using Argo workflows and Argo events, these critical information on the missed payments of the mortgages becomes visible in the case management system, um, uh, which is really important to us. And Sudesh will take you on a journey to how we set up these jobs in the public cloud. Yes, so uh, thank you, Carly. Um, yeah, so first I'm gonna explain a little bit about uh, how the infrastructure looks like, uh, very high level, so I'm not gonna dive too much into the details there. Uh, then I'm gonna explain uh, how we had, uh, and issues we had, and how we improved our workflows. Uh, I'll explain how we are re using uh, reports, uh, and also how we alert on our workflows. Uh, so let's start with the infrastructure. So this is basically, uh, this is basically it. Uh, we have uh, on-premise, we have our data center where uh, there is the, the mainframe is running uh, where all the transactions are happening. And we are running our infrastructure in the public cloud. And every night we get the, inform the latest information on the client account uh, from the mainframe. And we receive that data uh, and we start processing that using, uh, our, we receive the data using Argo events, and then we start pr the processing using Argo workflows. 
uh, the data is then uh, subsequently stored in our databases and in our storage, which is then used uh, by, the, by the operational uh, platform for the operators. Um, so when we started out uh, with uh, using Argo workflows, we had <laughs> Uh, jobs basically everywhere. So some things were running in development, other things were running in production. We had different versions in development and different versions in productions. Sometimes we didn't even know what was running uh, where. Uh, it was very inconsistent and we basically just had stuff all over the place. Uh, you can imagine that leads to a lot of problems and uh, basically it was kind of hard, hard to manage uh, this. Um, and yeah, so we had to take some steps to, to, to make this uh, more controlled. Uh, so we did three things, uh, which I'm gonna explain a little bit more in more detail. Uh, so uh, we added uh, role-based access control so that um, people cannot change too many things uh, anymore. Uh, we set up a, a pipeline uh, for consistency and uh, we split up the, the, the workflows uh, using templates. Um, so first the Airbag. Uh, so we created three roles. So what we, what we saw is that um, developers, uh, what they would do is they would test something in development and then they would go to the GUI and copy paste the, the YAML from the GUI into the production uh, environment. <laughs> and then, yeah, you, get, you, you can imagine that is not something you, you, you would want, right? Um, and so basically what we did is we said, okay, you can do stuff because we don't want, you, you need to have some control, right? If you're running these jobs or you're responsible for them, you need to have some kind of access that allows you to do the, the things that you have to do. Um, so we created a specific role for them as an operator eh, so they can stop, start, uh, restart, they can check the logs, but they cannot remove things and they cannot add stuff uh, anymore by hand. Um, we also created the reader role because um, we think it, it would be good to have some kind of transparency also towards the business owners, eh, because you can imagine these are very important processes and they need to be reported on daily uh, so that they can also actually look into the GUI and check what is going on, eh? how long does it take, what is failing. Eh? So they don't really have to understand it in much detail, but it's nice that they can actually just have a look to see what's, uh, what's actually going on. Uh, and then of course we created the third role uh, for, for ourselves so that uh, we can step in in case there are any issues and we can still manage it uh, uh, through the GUI as well. Um, so that's Airbag. Um, the second thing that we did uh, is using customize, but um, so I assume that everyone is uh, familiar with, uh, with customize, but uh, yeah, basically allows you to kind of templatize your, uh, your, uh, your manifests uh, so that you can roll them out consistently across different environments. Um, but there is a small problem with that. Customize uh, is a built-in tool for uh, Kubernetes. So it works with Kubernetes resources. And uh, Argo resources are custom resources. So Customize doesn't recognize those things. And that can lead to some problems, right? So if you're, for example, you have an uh, environment prefix. So every time I create a new workflow, I want to have production in front of it or uh, development basically from to know where I am or where this is running. Um, so if you would try that, then you would, that would not work. So basically you could not uh, deploy that or it would, would not pass through to the workflows or the resources from Argo that you want to deploy. Um, so, but there is a little trick that you can use and that is uh, the customize config. So basically you tell customize, hey, there is this resource that, that uh, I want you to know uh, which you can uh, also uh, uh, customize. As you, can you can modify this and I tell you the way how you can do this. So I give you a couple of examples. Um, and also the, oh yeah, the code shall be done later. So I have everything on GitHub. So you, if you want to have a look at it later, you can also just check it there. Um, so one of the things that you can do, for example, is you can patch the names. Right, so in this case, 
Yeah, I, um, I want to patch the name of the workflow template which I'm using inside of a cron job. Uh, yeah, so basically when I add a, a prefix, then that prefix will also pass to, through to the template that is using it. Um, so another thing that is quite uh, important, I think, is if you want to use different images in different environments, uh, you can also patch those. So Customize has a way of, of overwriting uh, images, uh, but you need to tell it, hey, I, I want you to also customize the workflow templates and the other custom resources that Argo has, right? So uh, that's what you see here, this, this is the image. And basically by uh, specifying in the customized config where it can find the image in this type of resource, um, I can then use normal customize, the normal customized language that you're probably already uh, familiar with, to also overwrite those images uh, as well. Um, and the last improvement that we did um, was we saw that sometimes we have jobs uh, that run in the weekend, which are different than during the week, uh, because the bank uses different processes and then we don't have to do all the work that we're doing uh, during the week. So, but what we saw is that the developers were basically copy pasting the tasks into new uh, cron jobs. So then you get copies of things and once you get copies of things, then things tend to uh, diverge and that can lead again to uh, all sorts of uh, problems, right? Inconsistencies. So uh, basically what we did is we split the things up, right? So uh, by splitting them up and creating separate templates for uh, different uh, processes, uh, we can reuse them when we need them. So in this case, uh, for example, we have different job for the weekend, different job for during the week, but uh, they use the same templates, so that means that the jobs that you want to run are always the same. Um, yeah, so this is actually how that then uh, looks like. So we are also always using the DAG type, so the, the directed acyclic uh, graph. Um, and yeah, so all the examples, they are in, Git in GitHub, so you can, uh, you can check it also uh, by yourself. Um, so once we had that done, um, the next thing was, okay, we have a kind of stable environment now, but uh, what we saw is that the developers are looking in the GUI every morning to see if the jobs had run successfully. But if you have a lot of jobs, you can imagine that the GUI shows you a long list of things and it can be kind of difficult to find the right thing that you were looking for. So uh, what we did is we created a reporting uh, mechanism that will only show them the things that they actually need to see. Um, so how does that work? Um, so this is the report. And basically what we did is we created a job in Argo. So we created a workflow to, con to check the other workflows. Uh, and the, the nice thing is that Argo has an API, which you can call uh, with the token uh, from the service account. And uh, so basically that's what we're doing. So we're running the container and then the pod reads the, the token from the service account and uses that to connect to the API and uh, gets the, the workflows that it needs to have. Uh, and then generates a report and sends it out either via email and in our case we're using Teams for that. Uh, and this is uh, basically how it looks right, like. So, so this job is running at seven o'clock in the morning uh, and it checks all the jobs that had run from nine o'clock in the evening the day before. And it basically gives, gives us an overview of what is the status, was it successful, did it fail? Uh, you can actually click on it and also you can check the history. And uh, that is something that I can uh, highly recommend that you enable uh, workflow, uh, the, his the workflow archive. Uh, this is how it looks like. Um, so they can see, and every, everyone who has report can click on it and they can immediately see what was the performance and how is it going over time. Um, so very convenient, very nice feature, highly recommend it. Um, so, but then we had, we thought about, okay, so how can we improve this better, you know? So we have this report now, but 
it would be nice if pe people would get informed also at the time that it breaks. Uh, some of these jobs, they can run for multiple hours. And if in, you check it in the morning at seven o'clock and you see that it failed, then you have to start it again. And then can take another five hours to run during the day. So, uh, and then you get into all kinds of problems with the timing. Uh, does, the, does it run? Does it finish before the next one? Do we have to stop it? So you want to get to, to be informed as soon as possible. Um, so Argo does have this concept of an uh, exit handler. Uh, but the problem with the exit handler is that normally you would have to set it on every template. So every job that you would have, you, you could set it. But uh, yeah, that is also not really doable if you have a lot of jobs and you have to manage that, of course. So we created this thing, uh, I call it the global exit handler. So there is a little trick that you can use, uh, which is the, the config map of the, the workflow controller. So the workflow controller has some settings and one of the settings is the, the workflow defaults. So these are settings that you can always pass um, to, your, uh, to your workflows and they will be patched automatically by the, the workflow controller to add these things. So the, one of the things that, uh, that we added was an exit handler. And it's basically uh, yeah, just a Python script that parses the, the statuses and based on the status, it, it's statuses, it sends out an alert when the job was failed. Uh, so as you can see here, this one failed, but the exit handler always runs um, to send out the status. So how does that look like? Uh, so in our case, we're using PagerDuty and here you see the, the report in PagerDuty. Uh, so what went wrong, the time, uh, yeah, which job it was, all the information. It's right there and we added the link. So if you click on it, you can actually just go to Argo and boom, you're right there where you need to be. Um, and here for the, the technical guys, the, the payload that we are sending there. Um, but everything, again, everything is on GitHub. You can find it there and you can check it yourself. Also the Python script. Um, so that's our, uh, that's our journey. And um, yeah, now we have some time for uh, questions. Oh. Yeah? Do we have a mic or no? You have to shout really hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, first, uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, I was wondering, um, are you using, for workflow templating, are you using kind of nesting? You have like workflow templates which call other workflow templates, or do you just have workflows calling workflow templates? Yeah, so they're always uh, templates. Yeah, so um, I think why you're asking this is because it's the, the workflow, you mean the running instance, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, so all our jobs, they live inside the cluster as uh, templates. Yeah. Um, but it depends how they are triggered, right? So we, everything is a template, everything is a workflow template, and they can be triggered either through a cron job, so a cron workflow, or they can be triggered through uh, events if they are based on uh, on events. But basically we use template workflow templates for all of them. Yeah, but you don't have a workflow template which is in turn reusing another workflow template. Yes. You also. do. And how yeah. are you tracking then a little bit those dependencies? Because at, at some point you could have maybe what, like three, four level nesting of workflow templates. Do you have anything to kind of visualize a little bit and, and track how certain changes will affect other workflow templates down the line? Um, 
No, the, the, the jobs that we need to run, they're quite consistent. Okay. So we, I mean, we do have an overview of these things, yep. right? But that's just on paper. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, great talk. As you're working in a very high secure industry, I would like to ask a question which, sorry, you may hate, hate me for that, but why did you choose Argo CD while the same functionality can be achieved, for example, with GitHub Actions or even a Jenkins CI, right? So what was the decision to choose this particular technology in your case? Uh, t t so you're saying if we could use GitHub CI for the jobs that we are running? I, I'm asking, like, what was the decision, so what was the logic behind selecting Argo CD in your particular use case, right? So because you could achieve the same results with other technology available on the market. Uh, I think, the, well, the, the Argo was already implemented before I came, but uh, the, the thing is that... Um, before this, uh, the bank was running these jobs uh, on-premise uh, with uh, Kronos on DCOS. So now, when moving to the public cloud, we're running this on Kubernetes. Uh, and that's why uh, Argo was, uh, was chosen. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Great talk. Um, I was interested about the reporting. Did you ever consider using the metrics endpoint to scrape it with Prometheus and just put it onto a dashboard as opposed to uh, emailing or using MS Teams? Um, yeah, so I had looked into it, but the, the thing is that so the, we do use that, uh, or we don't use that endpoint, but we, the jobs, they can be very long running. So they do have their own, uh, they expose their own metrics. But the, the nice thing about this, doing it this way is that if you call the API, you get all the information from all the workflows uh, at once, right? So you have everything together. Thanks. Anyone else? Oh, here. Thank you. Yeah, great talk, uh, Carly and Tadesh. Do you have uh, something which, you know, to actually do, to actually create the workflow templates, you would need to some CI as well to, to validate and prove that your templates aren't going to break all your workflows itself, if that makes sense. So like a CI for the CI. Um, yeah, so we do, that's why we have the pipeline, right? So, so everything that you create, you can test in the multiple environments before we, ru we actually run it in production. So also all these, uh, these templates. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but I guess that's, that's, the batch, that's the jobs themselves, but yeah. to actually prove your templates are, are, are you know, linted and, and clean and, and not gonna just, if you know, if you, if you uh, deploy a workflow which isn't valid and legitimate, yeah. it breaks all the workflows. So it's something which would do, would do that. You think it would be possible to break Argo itself with uh, some workflows, some wor workflow templates? Okay. I, I, th I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Okay, I've deployed templates before where they've uh, there was some typo or something like that, yeah, or you know uh, a uh, indentation that was incorrect, yeah, and uh, it I I pushed that kind of deployed it using Argo yeah. CD for Argo workflows, and it the, the Argo workflows were no longer available because they they were broken. Ah, okay, like this, yeah. I think we we do test it, everything. And uh, we don't have many changes uh, to the, 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 the templates uh, themselves. Uh, so the code might change, but that's the, the basically the, the scripts or the logic inside of the job. But the templates themselves, they're quite consistent. Okay. Yeah. So for us, that's not really uh, an issue. Okay. 
Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you. Okay. Thank Thanks. you.